Well, thanks for joining guys. Um, I've got a very quick couple of slides, so not too much. The main goal of today is really just taking you through how to use the newest feature um, with multiple users joining a meeting. So let me go ahead and share my window here. Um, if you're not using 90 yet, I imagine all of you guys are, but there is a sign up link. You can also go to our website. If you are using 90, um, following us on our social channels is another way to find out about new features and webinars like this. So definitely feel free to do that, especially if you got forwarded this email or anything like that. Um, and feel free to use the chat throughout this time. So Monica and Steven are both in here. Uh, Monica will be answering questions and even taking any questions that we wanna answer at the end and throwing them onto an issues list so we can talk through it. Um, so yeah, feel free to use the chat and throw stuff in there as I'm going through and talking about it. So agenda for the day is really just overview um, of the updates. So basically what's changed um, what's been adjusted, going through some of the use cases. So talking about, um, you know, how a meeting might work if you're in person versus virtual or a hybrid, and then really just diving into 90, you know, showing you how it works side by side for a presenter and an attendee. And then, like I said, we'll definitely have time to talk through any questions. So as those come up, um, throw them in the chat and we'll go ahead and answer them real time or, um, or in the IDS section. And I grabbed this link because I wanted to throw it in the chat so you guys all had access to it. You can search for it in the Help Center, but that is essentially just the complete breakdown that Steven wrote that shows you all of the things that we'll go over today. So if you did want to share that as a resource with your team, you're more than welcome. This is also being recorded. So we'll obviously send it out um, when we wrap up here as well. All right, let me actually present this. All right, so overview of the updates. Um, main aspect is that rather than one person starting the meeting and then needing to share their screen, now one person starts it and other people can join into that same meeting. So a little bit of a change there. It's only in the weekly meeting specifically. So if you go to quarterly, annual, or any of those other meeting types, we will be adding the same function in there. It's just not there quite yet. Um, and so there's this concept where there's one person is the host, everybody else is the attendee. So there's still one person that starts the meeting and then others will just join that same meeting. And the biggest thing to keep in mind is that you're not following the host. It's not like the share screen function where I'm, you're gonna see my mouse move and when I go to a section that's gonna change your screen completely, it's really giving you a collaborative space where you both can join the same meeting and I can add an issue and Monica can add an issue and we can all do that together rather than the attendees being locked into seeing what I'm seeing. So we wanted to give you more flexibility. So it was more like that Google Doc kind of feel, um, as opposed to you being locked into just watching somebody else's screen, which is essentially what you could do before with just the share screen function on Zoom. So that's next one, use cases. So when everybody's in the same room, um, there's a tendency where you have kind of this big whiteboard or you've got the big screen and everybody ends up turning and facing this way. So we're hoping with this feature, you can be more engaged and actually looking around the table. If you've just got your laptop open and, oh, I need to add a to-do. I need to take a note on that issue. You can do it really quick. And then you're right back up and actually looking and talking to the other people instead of just, you know, body turned and staring at the screen. So that is a hopefully a great value add for anybody that is in office right now and has everybody in the same room. If everybody is remote, which is how our team operates, we've been using this feature where we still are on Zoom. I will typically still, or whoever's hosting the meeting, will typically still share their screen. So if you wanted to look at what the presenter is doing, you can, and you can have it open. So obviously that works really nicely if you've kind of got uh, the ability to have multiple windows open. I know some other teams, 
will just use Zoom for video sharing and then they have their own 90 window open so that they can go in and take notes. And I'll show you guys how it works. Like if I'm adding notes onto an issue, whoever's in the meeting and has that issue open is gonna see the same thing I'm typing. So um, you can kind of choose which one you prefer. It'll, it'll be an option up to your team if you wanna stick with presenters still sharing their screen and, and having that follow along option or just doing the video sharing. And then if you're in a hybrid situation, you're kind of in the same boat. So if you've got multiple people in the same room, you probably still want to have, you know, Zoom open for video sharing. Maybe you've got your laptop where you can see everybody individually. So it still feels like for the people that are remote, you guys are all kind of in that same situation together rather than having, you know, one central thing that you guys are all looking at. So taking a look at 90, um, what I'm going to do is actually share my full monitor here. So hopefully it's not too, too zoomed out for you guys. Um, but what I'm going to do, so I'm logged in to a normal my account here. And then over here, I'm in an incognito window. So um, I'm logged into our 90 client success account. And so if I start a meeting, get that out of the way. If I start a meeting on my side, what's going to happen is you can see right over here, I can go ahead and join the meeting. So that little token came up right away for me. I can also go to the meetings page and see a join meeting button here. So you're going to have both of those options if you're on the team and already logged into your, your account. So you can click either one of those. And when I click join meeting, it brings me into the same section that the presenter is in. So that's the one time you're kind of following with that person. I can get rid of this down here. And then you can see at, so I'm the presenter on this side and I'm just a normal attendee on the right. So on the left-hand side, this pretty much looks exactly like what it did before. You've got the finish button down here at the bottom. You can suspend. You've got the ability to go to the next section and, and pause it. Whereas on the right over here, I don't have the finish button. I just have the leave meeting option. So the attendees, they can jump in and out of the meeting, but they don't have the ability to really like end it and complete it for everybody like the person that hosting and starting the meeting did. The other thing you'll notice is up top here, um, you can see everybody that has joined the same meeting. So 90 client success, which is this account over here. Um, you can see Monica and Steven both joined as well. So as you get more people, you'll continue to see those tokens come up. If you get more than five, you'll just see a little like plus sign and then you can hover over that to see everybody's names and I'll drop down. All right, when I move to the next section, again, I'm the presenter over here, you'll notice I didn't automatically jump on the right-hand side. So the attendee is still working independently because what if I'm creating an issue over here? I don't want my screen to just all of a sudden, you know, jump somewhere else that I wasn't expecting. I want to make sure I finish up whatever I was doing. But I can see, hey, the, the rest of the team, they've moved on. So I know that we're in data because it's highlighted. Um, I can see the time going, so I can click over there. And then the real benefit to this whole multiple people being in here and the collaboration aspect is when you're in the meeting, I can add a number and it's gonna show up for the other people in that meeting. So no matter what you're doing in here, I can go ahead and put a four and we see it over here. I could add a measurable, I could update the goals. Whatever you're doing, you're gonna be able to see those changes. So you can see we've got some more numbers coming in here from Monica and Steven that are in the same meeting as me. So you get that real time feedback as you're going through. All right. Same thing goes when you're heading into rocks, headlines, to-dos, issues. Um, I know for our team, uh, we kind of open it up and it's more of a dialogue and multiple people collaborating in here. So when we're talking about a rock um, and somebody wants to mark it as off track, you know, they can do that on their own. Or, you know, maybe Steven says, hey, I'm going to turn that into an issue it's not all on the presenter to have to go through and do that as the one person, but everybody can kind of be engaged in the meeting and turn their own items into issues and take whatever notes they need to on there. And that way, when we do get to that section, all of the information will be right there. 
So let's go ahead and open up one of these too. So again, presenter, I clicked on win the little adventures account. If I open it up on this side too, when I come in here and take notes, um, we'll be able to see those notes being taken on the other screens as well. So the main thing to remember is as I click on items, it's not gonna automatically click or change or do anything on the other screens. It's really just gonna be, if I'm looking at the same thing, I'm getting those real-time updates. Then you can see we moved on to headlines. Same thing when we go to headlines, you know, check items off, turn them into issues, turn them into cascading messages, you know, completely remove them from the list. So if you delete something, it'll get removed that way. Um, and then when we move to to do's, it should even work where when you are sorting these, the sort option goes into the same order that someone is clicking as well. So you should have that ability where you're taking notes, you can update the title, due date, descriptions, and then even the sort by as well. And if the attendee, so over here on the right hand side where I'm not the presenter, I can leave that section. I can go do whatever I need to do within this meeting. Obviously, most of you guys are probably gonna, you know, stay with where that host is going and making sure you guys are all on the same page. But if I need to go to the IDS list and do anything, if I need to go back to data and make a note on something, I can absolutely go do those things as well. All right. So now we're looking at the issues list. You can see we caught up here. And the timer at the top is always following the presenter. So it's not like, you know, I'm keeping my own time over here. This is the person who's really controlling the notes that are going to get sent out at the end of the meeting when it comes to that meeting time. But the nice thing is anybody can mark issues as done. Anybody can create to do's and those are all going to flow into the same meeting recap email as well. So I already showed you guys how we can open up these items um, and take notes on them individually. And we'll see those updates as they're being made. Um, the other thing to remember is it works the same way with the show notes section. So show notes opens up down here. If I wanna take any notes here, again, I can't see them because I don't have it open, but as soon as I open it, we'd be able to see those changes real time. So um, feel free to, Go ahead and take notes in the issues section, take notes in the meeting notes area. These are the ones that are included in the um, rich text at the bottom of the meeting recap email. There we go. All right. And once we head to conclude, this is the one time that everybody will get prompted to move to the next section. So when the presenter, nothing will happen if an attendee goes to conclude, but if the presenter clicks on conclude, you can see everybody else is gonna get this notice. The presenter has moved to conclude. The reason being is probably means that you guys are wrapping up and it's time to put in your scores. So we can click go to conclude. And then when I go through and enter my score, that'll show up for everybody at the same time as well. So as the you know, host or presenter over here, I can go through and update people's scores kind of like you guys normally do, or everybody can throw them in on their own. I know on our team, uh, we kind of just go through and whoever's in the meeting is going through and entering their scores and doing that on their own. And then you can go through the same process where if there's a seven and you want to talk about, hey, why was that a seven? Obviously you're still having those conversations. You're not skipping those just because everybody's entering their own. All right, once you guys are done, you can use the finish button. I scroll all the way to the bottom here. You have the same options here. So auto archive, send the meeting recap email and finish. Finish button does the same thing. For your attendees, you don't have, or you do have the ability to finish. So if they did want to, you could, it kind of works the same way. We just didn't put it in the left-hand side here um, because typically they're not really going to. But whoever clicks finish, it's going to work the same way where it, everybody's going to get marked as absent. So that's kind of a prompt you guys have already seen. And then it's also going to let you know that it's going to end for all of the participants. So 
if we go ahead and click finish instead of like, you know cancel and we want to stay in the meeting what's going to happen is it's just going to give everybody that's in here a little notification meeting has finished and then you can see it auto wrapped up for anybody that was in that meeting and we can see it here we go here's what we ran we can click on it go get the details um, we got the meeting notes in there the ratings scroll down and then how long we spend each section as well so again this is following how long the presenter did over here um, and then any of those you know issues solved to do's created headline that we checked off would open up just like normal so that's the basic breakdown again not available in the quarterly or annual yet that's kind of what we'll move into next with setting up um, i have not been looking in the chat as far as questions go so usually i'm a little bit better about that about seeing what's if there's anything real time i should be answering um, i've had some good ones we put them on the uh webinar ids list uh, that uh, it will be good to get your take on okay good yeah and i think yeah that's it I feel like I powered through that. Let's see. So question one, as the presenter and the meeting has advanced to IDS, you need to refer to something on the data tab. Will the impact? Oh, great question. So what I typically recommend is if you're in the IDS section, so I'll go back to my leadership team here where we've actually got some data. If I'm looking at IDS, I would encourage you to do this even you know, before this feature was out. If I wanna go back and look at data, I probably don't wanna click back here. Instead, I could go look at view tool and then click on data. And that way, all of my time is still going towards IDS. So you've got the same tool pulled up here. If I wanna go back to the IDS list, I can just click on it. But that's really why we have this view tool set up because you know, you might need to talk about the accountability chart, you might need to talk about your rocks, whatever it is, you don't have to go back to the specific section of the agenda, you can just use this button and then pull it up here. So the main difference is, let's go back over to our meeting. So because I'm in IDS, I open it up and I'm here. So if I did want to see rocks, just like we're looking at them now, I need to pull it up here. So it still updates you can see i just changed the status you can still update things real time when you're using that view tool it's the only exception to that is going to be on the vto accountability chart process and directory those four pages we don't have the syncing capability on those four yet but as far as view tool goes if you're looking at data rocks to do's or issues you'll have the same you know meeting sync options let me just click back Stay in the meeting. All right. What are your thoughts about no longer having a scribe, just the presenter facilitator, but no longer a separate person navigating and taking notes? I think that's completely up to your team um, and really like the maturity level of your team. So everybody might be a little bit different in this scenario. I know for our leadership team specifically, we don't have somebody who is a specific scribe in that meeting where they're not on the leadership team um it's it's something where a leadership team member would take on that responsibility so i think it's still smart to have somebody who's designated as hey i am running this meeting today so i'm the one who is the host clicking to data clicking to rocks taking the main actions while somebody else is probably still facilitating the ids and the discussion aspect of it um, but because everybody is a little bit more engaged in that scribe process, it's just a lot less of a lift for the one person to take on. So you probably still have those two roles specifically, but you probably don't need a dedicated scribe from like outside of your core team joining. You can probably now that it's set up this way, have it be managed through someone that's actually internal on your team. Well, like say Christine and I are discussing an issue and we agree that I need to take a to-do on it. I can go right there as a, hey, like I'm gonna take a to-do. I need to have some other notes I didn't want to put on there. I can go in and say, hey, like this is what I want to call it. So it's, it's recognizable to me and it makes that to-do 
a little bit work better for me because sometimes when somebody else is making your to do, they're they're going to call it something. You might look at it three days later and be like, oh, I don't recall what this was at all. So now it's the ability to move past that and everybody has the power to do it right then and there. Exactly. Yeah. Put your own context in, take the extra second. Um, hopefully it's like helping that meeting rhythm go a lot faster and more smoothly. So still with the presenter and the scribe, but adding your own notes, giving your own color, you know, putting that link in the comment section of a issue that you found, you know, all of those extra things um, just give you that little bit of extra flexibility, flexibility and collaboration really. All right, and then what's a use case for the meeting notes with this new feature? So, you know, the meeting notes, um, I've seen a lot of people use it a lot of different ways. Some people jot down what's going on in their segue, you know, they just, you know, want to have that sort of information recorded there. Um, other than that, I've heard of people recording their meetings and adding them as attachments in there so that you have a record of it. It's really up to you guys. I know for us internally, when we're talking about an issue, we, we take notes on that specific issue because if I want to go back and look for it or see what we talked about, you know, I'm going to use the search function and want to look at this specifically. The meeting notes are great for anything that you want to capture about this meeting as a whole. Um, if we're, you know, it's Thanksgiving week next week and we only have four people attending instead of eight, you know, take the note, write down, you know, four absent week of Thanksgiving, you know, that sort of kind of additional information about the meeting itself um, is probably more of what that meeting notes area is used for. So I hope that if that doesn't answer your question. Definitely let me know. And I did just see Larry ask, when is this available? It's available right now. So we just launched it last night. Um, if you go into your account, you'll see the start meeting option. And then whoever else is on that team is going to see the option to join. So I obviously had it pulled up side by side. I'm doing the unusual thing where I'm logged into two different accounts. And I can do that because I'm using an incognito window there. You know, normally if you would do that, it kind of log you out of one or the other if you just did two normal browsers. Um, but yeah, you can start using it right now. All right. See, there's a couple other, there's a good question about an option to include a follow button. So it would stay on the same screen, kind of like some whiteboard software uses, which, which makes sense. Um, yeah. It's kind of like that fine line being able to add the information on the screen that you're at, not getting locked into the rest of the team and the rest of the presentation, but also staying, staying, st paying attention to it along the way. But it's a good point. Yeah, and, well and when we were testing this out in beta, um, it was interesting because some people said, oh, well, I'd love this pop-up, you know, every time I move to a section, um, you know, the go to conclude option. So there might be solutions like that where we start working them in because people do want more of that, like, I'm leading the meeting and I want to follow what you're doing. So whether it's kind of like what you said, Stephen, with the, you know, whiteboard option, or, you know, you have a setting where you could turn it on so that, you know, every time you move to the next section, everybody's prompted. Those are definitely some options we can think about adding in in the future. Is there a time frame on when we would be adding this to the quarterly and annual? I do not have a time frame right now. Um, I think we're probably looking at next year. Um, so it's not uh, before the end of the year kind of deal, um, but probably into, yeah, January, February. Let's see, what other questions did I get? Ooh, uh, can we sort our headlines by owner? Absolutely, or, oh, you can't. Wait, no. that's only because there's one there. Yeah, let me try it. Let me see. Are you on the you webinar could. team? Oh, yeah, I am. If I switch back to leadership. No. We need to add sort there. 
I'm sure that's on the feature request list and I just completely forgot about it. So thank you for bringing that up. Gianni actually had a really good question about uh, getting a walkthrough on best practices just in general. Oh. Um, and so for that, I'd encourage, we have a couple different resources pages, uh, but we also, if you haven't had a demo call with anybody on our team yet, with anybody on our client success team, it's an extremely helpful way to get somebody to kind of have a one-on-one -on -one conversation about how 90 works. And uh, once you've got your whole team involved, we also do a kickoff call where we're happy to get that same client success team on to give you a little bit more uh, in-depth walkthrough on how we, how we imagine all of these tools working together. Absolutely. So that resources page is going to have a link to a lot of different videos. So kind of a breakdown of each specific tool that you can go ahead and click on and go into there. We also do have a specific meetings best practices page that you can go to. Um, and then if I keep going down webinars. So just like this one, there is a basics of 90 webinar. There's one that's kind of like optimizing the usage. So it's great for more of like a team lead um, where you want them to be a pro at, at running their department and being this person that's leading their meetings. So those are two great options. But like Steven said, we'll do one-on-ones and Q&As with you guys. You can request those through the live chat in the bottom right corner. Um, or I can probably snag the link from somewhere. Monica, if you have the Q&A link, maybe you can post it in there too. I'm trying to think where it would be. Nah, it's saved. Oh, let's see. And a copy um, of today's webinar will be emailed out. So Yeah, I'll send um, one to everybody on here. And we'll, it'll also live on our YouTube channel, which is an awesome place to check out our past product office hours videos where you can get in-depth conversations from Christine and one of our in-house coaches, Jim, where they talk through the theory behind tools and how they use the tools themselves. There's some really good videos on that. Yep. And those we always go over because we get a little bit more into, you know, Jim has the coaching angle behind it. So a little bit more into the the best practices, what he's seen with his clients. Um, and we cover a variety of topics. So if you're curious about things like running your next quarterly meeting, getting into the process section, just last month we did, hey, here's how you can run some great one-on-ones between managers and direct reports and really start building those high trust relationships. So I would definitely encourage you to go to the YouTube channel and look at those there. I'm getting ready to throw a link to that nice. in there just now. All right, any other questions that we should be going over? Um, it looks like Jay has one. Um, can you go over the part where you talked about bringing up the video conference for multiple users and a shared screen during the level 10? So when I mention that, I'm really speaking to, you know, whatever video conferencing software you guys already used, you know, assuming you're remote, if you're using that, whether it's Google Meet, I know internally we use Zoom, you can decide, do I want to, if I'm the presenter, have my Zoom open and share this screen so that people can see exactly what I'm doing while they join the meeting? Or would I prefer, hey, I just want to see everyone's faces really big and then everybody can join on their own screen and, and not worry about me specifically sharing it. So that's kind of a decision you guys will go through um, internally, you know, as you start using this feature over the next couple of weeks, have that discussion and decide, do we need to see the presenter screen or, hey, if we're all on the same page about, here's the issue we're talking about, I'm going to create this to do, you know, and having those discussions in the meeting you might just would rather, you maybe would rather see everybody's faces nice and big and then have um, everybody just running 90 on their own. So totally up to you guys there. All right. Well, I, I think that covers it. I feel like I really breezed through it, but maybe it's just a super simple feature to use. You guys are gonna love it. 
going into next week. Hopefully you guys can still run some level tens, even though it's the week of Thanksgiving. Um, and please let us know your feedback, you know, that kind of information, like, Hey, we'd love to have a follow along feature or jump to the next section with the presenter, anything like that, send it through the live chat down here in the bottom right corner. They're always sharing that feedback with our product team. So would love to hear from you guys. Um, and thank you so much for joining. We'll be sure to email this out.